Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we will talk about the causes of abortions and miscarriages. Before discussing the causes of abortions in detail, let us define what is miscarriage. Abortion or miscarriage is defined as pregnancy loss at less than 24 weeks of gestation. And what is spontaneous abortion? Spontaneous abortion is the miscarriage that occurs in the absence of any medical or surgical intervention. And what is repeated pregnancy loss? It is defined as the pregnancy loss of more than once before the age of viability. So, what are the causes of miscarriages? RCG guideline about recurrent miscarriages tell us about eight causes of recurrent miscarriages, and those include first of all epidemiological factors, secondly antiphospholipid syndrome, third genetic factors, fourth anatomical factors which include the uterine abnormality, cervical weaknesses, etc. We have certain endocrine factors, the immune factors, in infective agents, and inherited thrombophilic defects. So let us talk about the epidemiological factors, which include first of all the maternal age. Advancing maternal age is associated with a decline in both the number and quality of the remaining oocytes. Okay, that's why there is increased risk of miscarriages with advancing maternal age. Secondly, the number of previous miscarriages, the risk of Further miscarriage increase after each successive pregnancy loss, reaching approximately 40% after three consecutive pregnancy loss, and the prognosis worsens with increasing maternal age. Third is that of cigarette smoking. Maternal cigarette smoking and caffeine consumption have been associated with increased risk of spontaneous miscarriages in a dose-dependent manner. Fourth is that of alcohol consumption. Heavy alcohol consumption is toxic to the embryo and fetus. Even moderate consumption of five or more units per week may increase the risk of spontaneous miscarriages. Fifth is that of obesity. Recent retrospective studies have reported that obesity increases the risk of both sporadic and recurrent miscarriages. Now let us discuss the role of antiphospholipid syndrome in causing recurrent miscarriages. Antiphospholipid syndrome is the most important treatable cause of recurrent miscarriages. Antiphospholipid syndrome refers to the association between antiphospholipid antibodies, lupus anticoagulant, anticardiolipin antibodies, and anti beta two glycoprotein one antibodies. And the adverse pregnancy outcome or vascular thrombosis is associated with antiphospholipid syndrome. And that adverse pregnancy outcome include first of all three or more consecutive miscarriages before ten weeks of gestation, and one or more morphologically normal fetal loss after ten weeks of gestation, and thirdly one or more preterm births. Before 34 weeks of gestation, owing to placental diseases. If you want to study the complete topic of APLS antiphospholipid syndrome, go to the link in the I button in the top right corner of this video. Now let us discuss the genetic factors. In approximately two to five percent of the couples with recurrent miscarriages, one of the partners carries a balanced structural chromosomal anomaly, most commonly a balanced reciprocal or Robertsonian translocation. If the peripheral blood carrier type is performed, now let us talk about the anatomical factors, which include the congenital uterine uh, abnormalities and cervical weaknesses, etc. So, uh, when we talk about the congenital uh, uterine malformations, we have different types of uterine malformations, and the exact contribution that the these congenital uterine anomalies make to the recurrent miscarriages remain unclear. Since the prevalence and reproductive implications of uterine anomalies in general populations are unknown, but the reported prevalence of uterine anomalies in recurrent miscarriages uh, population range from 1.8 to 37.6 percent. Now, cervical weakness is a very important cause. It's a recognized cause of the uh, second trimester miscarriages, but the true incidence is unknown since the diagnosis is essentially the clinical one. 
Now, what are the roles of endocrine factors in causing the recurrent miscarriages? Systemic maternal endocrine disorders such as the diabetes mellitus and thyroid diseases have been associated with miscarriages. Women with the diabetes who have HbA1c levels in the first trimester are at increased risk of miscarriage and fetal malformations. However, well-controlled diabetes mellitus is not a risk factor for recurrent miscarriage nor is treated thyroid dysfunction. Now, what are the role of immune factors? There is no clear evidence to support the hypothesis of human leukocyte antigen incompatibility between the couples. The presence of maternal leukocytotoxic antibodies or the absence of maternal blocking antibodies. Hence, they should not be offered routinely in the investigation of couples with recurrent miscarriages. Coming to the natural killer cells, these are found in the peripheral blood and uterine mucosa. Peripheral blood natural killer cells are phenotypically and functionally different from uterine natural killer cells. Now, let us discuss the role of infective agents. Any severe infection that leads to bacteremia or viremia can cause sporadic miscarriage. Toxoplasmosis, rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes and listeria infection do not fulfill these criteria and routine. Torch screening should be abundant. So here we have the list of the torch infection which include the toxoplasmosis and other infections, rubella, cytomegalovirus virus and herpes simplex virus. We do not r routinely do the uh, torch testing uh, in case of the recurrent miscarriages diagnosis. Now coming to the role of bacterial vaginosis, the presence of bacterial vaginosis in the first trimester of pregnancy has been reported as a risk factor for the second trimester miscarriages and preterm delivery, but the evidence for its association with the first trimester miscarriages is inconsistent. Now let us discuss the role of inherited thrombophilia defect. Both inherited and acquired thrombophilia including activity protein C resistance most commonly due to factor V latent mutation and deficiencies of protein CNS and antithrombin 3, hyperhomocysteinemia and prothrombin gene mutations are established causes of systemic thrombosis. In addition, the inherited thrombophilia have been implicated as possible cause of recurrent miscarriages and the late pregnancy complications with the presumed mechanism being thrombosis of placental circulation. So with that, uh, we have completed all the causes of recurrent miscarriages. I will come again with the uh, further investigations and the treatment of abortions and miscarriages topic. I would like to complete my presentation with this quote that with hard work and effort, you can achieve anything. Hard work is essential element in tracking down and performing a strategy or in executing it. Okay, thank you so much. Wish you best of luck. Allah Hafiz.